strong-willed with a sense of humour and fun. Margaret Hughes say her family was frail but active, and they are devastated by her death. She would have been 92 tomorrow, but she refused to be evacuated from her sheltered accommodation. And when the flood water rose, the grandmother who never complained and who put others first had nowhere to go. This city has started to clean itself up. It will be a long process. Yesterday, we spoke to Phil Harrison through his top floor window. This morning, he showed me around his damaged home. Unrecognisable as, as a home, isn't it? And just devastated, really. This is the first time I've had a proper look in here. And it's, uh, it's not good. It's not good at all. But it's only furniture. There is no perfect response to an emergency, but now that the flood water has receded, there are legitimate questions about what happened here 24 hours ago. Should the flood warning have been raised earlier to the severe level? And what happens when an elderly, vulnerable lady decides not to be rescued? The important thing was people had already been warned that flooding was, a, was going to happen and uh, they were beginning to make their arrangements. So you don't think there was any error at all in the Environment Agency's judgment? Here? I don't believe there was an error in our judgment, no. Because nobody was knocking on our doors, nobody at all. Flashing lights outside his home was the only alert Jason Jones received. He saved what he could and let the flood take the rest. You can repair stuff like this, you can't repair a life, can you? You know, somebody that's passed away, you can't, you can't repair that, can you? Rebuilding lives begins with clearing out the rubbish. The water will eventually go, but it will leave its mark both on people and their property. Rupert Evelyn, ITV News, St Asaph.